Hello students, welcome to this agriculture lesson on the topic agroforestry. I am Mr. Timon Atho. Now in our previous lesson we were able to define what agroforestry means, we looked at the importance of uh, agroforestry and uh, we started looking at the forms of agroforestry, we dealt with the first two. And in this lesson we are going to deal with the third and then we proceed to other aspects of agroforestry. The third form of agroforestry is border tree planting, where trees are planted along the farm border. And mostly we do that, one, to mark the boundary uh, so that you know where your farm ends and the neighbor's farm begins. Two, they act as a windbreak because they will reduce the speed of wind so that the wind does not become so destructive on the farm. Three, they act as a fence. You can use like cypress to fence your farm. And from the trees, we can get timber, wood, and other products. And uh, suitable species will include eucalyptus, grevillea, macamia, uh, jacaranda, among others. Where generally do we plant agroforestry trees? The sites, the common sites for agroforestry trees on the farm include the boundaries, like in border planting, too. You can, talk, you can plant them on the riverbanks so that they uh, stabilize the riverbanks. Three, within the homestead for the aesthetic value so that they make the home to be beautiful. Uh, four, on the terraces, and in that they will also help to conserve soil. And on the slopes, again, to conserve soil. But as we grow the trees, there are certain uh, species of trees and shrubs that should be avoided at particular sites. For example, a eucalyptus should uh, not be planted at the river banks because the, the, the take up a lot of water and they may um, dry up the rivers, especially if it's a seasonal and a small river. Two, eucalyptus on arable land should be avoided because their leaves, when they fall, they contain a lot of alkaloids which have allelopathic effects. That means they um, stress the other crops and prevent them from growing. Three, fruit trees near roads should be avoided so that you avoid losses through theft. Otherwise, on the roads, if you plant uh, fruit trees, mangoes and oranges, then the bypasses will uh, harvest on your behalf. Uh, number four, bushy shrubs near homesteads should also be avoided because they may harbor dangerous animals like snakes. Trees foraged by bees uh, on grazing land should be avoided because the bees may sting the animals, which uh, when probably during the process of grazing, uh, they interfere with the with the bees in their hives. And then finally, the tall trees with wide spreading roots near buildings should be avoided because these trees, if they fall, they, if they happen to fall, they may damage the buildings. And even as they grow, their roots uh, cause cracks on the walls and on the fruits. That brings us to tree nurseries. And uh, what is our definition of a nursery? We'll say a nursery is a special seedbed, a small piece of land where seedlings are raised uh, until they are ready for transplanting. So in a nursery, they don't grow until maturity. They are just raised for a few months and then they are transplanted. And we have different types of nurseries. Uh, based on the soil conditions of the particular nursery, you can have either the nursery being raised or sunken. Now raised nurseries will be suitable for high rainfall areas uh, so that there is dra uh, proper drainage you raise the nursery so that there's the level of the nursery or the surface of the nursery is a little higher than the normal soil surface. Then sunken nurseries uh, is where you raise the you make the nursery rather such that its surface is a little lower than the general ground surface. And this is common in arid and semi-arid areas so that we retain moisture and reduce water loss. Uh, two, based on the on the period when the nursery is used, we have permanent nurseries and we also have temporary nurseries. The permanent nurseries are used time and again, it's a designated place where tree seedlings are raised. And temporary nurseries are used for raising nurseries for a very short period of time, probably only once. And based on this and also on the, uh, niche, uh, the surface on which the seeds are sown, we can have nurseries being direct nurseries or containerized. Direct nurseries or what we call bare root nurseries are where seeds are planted directly on the ground without any containers. 
So seeds are in direct contact with the soil on the ground. And these have a disadvantage because they have a low survival rate, especially after transplanting, because of root injury during uprooting or transplanting. Uh, while containerized nurseries mean the seeds are sown into containers, maybe you can use pots, or you can use polythene leaves, or tins, or any suitable container which are having a rooting medium, maybe soil. Uh, and it's uh, usually the best. Uh, how do we collect seeds uh, for raising agroforest trees? You need to first uh, look at the qualities of seeds, and we shall talk about eight of them. Uh, good agroforestry tree seeds. Seeds should be whole. That means it should not have any part of it, uh, maybe damaged by a pest or any other. Uh, it should be of good size so that we are sure it, 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 it carries within it sufficient uh, food for germination. And then it should be free from diseases and pests. Uh, it should also be fresh not stored for a very long period of time. It should be from a mature tree. Okay, that uh, will help us uh, be sure that it, it's not going to show dormancy. And it should also be dry, uh, dry enough. Again, that is important to avoid uh, dormancy. It should be free from physical damage and it should also be from fast growing mother trees of desirable characteristics so that the Siblings that will arise will also uh, take up those characteristics. How do we collect the seeds? Three methods. One, special fellings. That means you cut down a tree and uh, then you collect the seeds, probably because the tree was uh, tall enough and you could not collect the seeds one by one from the top. So you uh, cut it down and then you collect the seeds, like for eucalyptus. Two, by shaking of the trees like cotton and limb you shake and then the trees will fall i mean the, the, the seeds will fall or their pods or whatever was containing the seeds and three by picking you can just pick the seeds or from the fruits of the, the pods if you can reach them or you can use hooks to pick as such seeds and then uh, we'll finish with the how to prepare seeds and uh, one is by extraction, we remove the seed from the fruit or from the pod by either soaking or threshing or even a mechanical opening so that we remove the seed from whatever was covering it. Two, cleaning and sorting uh, so that we remove the other foreign materials and we select uh, good sized seeds. Three, drying to reduce the moisture content and again this helps to uh, break up dormancy. Four, seed testing to verify the seed quality, especially in terms of the germination percentage. And uh, storage, if you will use it in the near future, you can store it. And if you have to store it, you store it at room temperature, about 25 degrees or 28 degrees centigrade. Uh, treatment to break seed dormancy, you can do that by soaking, hot water treatment, mechanical breaking, or what we call scarification. And you can also do partial burning. All this we learned way back in Form 2. Uh, seed inoculation is another way of preparing seeds of agroforestry trees, especially for the leguminous trees. You inoculate, that means you coat it with the correct strain of rhizobium to facilitate nitrogen fixation whenever that tree seed is going to be planted. And finally, we talk about seed dressing uh, to protect the seeds from soil borne pests and diseases. You coat the seeds with particular chemicals, a pesticide uh, or even a fungicide to protect it from soil borne pests and diseases. And uh, the last portion of this lesson, we are going to just mention the nursery management practices. There are a number of mulching that will help to prevent much water loss from the nursery. Watering, if it's dry, you, you, you apply water to the nursery so that seedlings can get sufficient moisture. Weed control, we remove all the weeds. Pricking out means you remove the excess seedlings so that you have a sufficient number for that particular space so that they don't outcompete. Uh, I mean, they don't compete uh, for the various new uh, resources. Shading, you construct a shade at least to reduce moisture loss and also to uh, reduce the impact of rain or even water touching on the seedlings. 
Next is pest and disease control in the nursery. Uh, you spray pesticides and even fungicides to control various pests and fungal infections on the nursery. And hardening off, uh, which basically means you make the seedlings to be adapted to the uh, ecological conditions in the surrounding where it will be transplanted. And finally, root pruning, which means you cut overgrown root, uh, uh, roots so that uh, they adapt when uh, they will be transplanted. And that is how root pruning is done to ease and lifting and to develop short and dense and even strong rooting system. You run a panga uh, down the uh, box, the seedling box or the nursery. Uh, and with that, we come to the end of this lesson. I want to appreciate you very much for listening to me. In our next lesson, we shall proceed with uh, the other aspects of agroforestry. Thank you very much.